Nagbabalik ang ating 68th UP National Writers Workshop para sa isang poetry project ng ating manonulat na si Loiza Maria Victoria Vix Vasquez. Ang kanyang proyektong One Time Big Time and Other Poems ay ipapakilala at tatalakayin ng panelista nating si J. Neil Garcia. One of the interesting points that the author raises in her essay relates to the question of linguality, writing in English as a Filipino in the Philippines right here and now. This is not a new question, and as she asserts and demonstrates in her work, the attitude that the contemporary Filipino writer in English must take in this regard must simply be critical. To particularize the use of this language by wresting it away from its lexical home, this amounts to a kind of mindfulness that recontextualizes English by allowing or even forcing it to lend voice to the specificities of its reality, of its usage in our case. This cheered me up right away, for this is the kind of poetry, the kind of writing that for some time now I've been urging my CW students to endeavor to compose. And then of course I remembered that the author had in fact been one such student and I smiled even more. Linguality for an Anglophone writer is always already interlinguality, meaning it is always already culturally fraught and syncretic. Another way of saying this is that an Anglophone text is, right from the get-go, translational. As a form of cross-cultural dialogue, the Anglophone text is, by definition, situational, despite or precisely because of its universal intelligibility. Just look at our Facebook feeds with news and posts from near and far made by friends, agencies, influencers, and the like. And what easily becomes clear is that nowadays, aided precisely by the cultural and technological globalization that has resolutely couched itself in this medium, not one but multiple Anglophone worlds are already in existence all over the globe. What's interesting is that while communication seems possible and likely across the cleavages and chasms of these worlds, this communication is always, from the perspective of end users, culturally mediated and particular. To my mind, the Adresia Filipino Anglophone text is primarily a Filipino Anglophone readership for whom the task of particularizing or elaborating reference is no longer textually necessary. Secondarily, of course, like all Anglophones, our writers also conceivably wish to communicate to other Anglophone readerships, which need not be exclusively American or British anymore, but rather as multifarious as the Englishes that have taken root in different corners of the world. Anglophone utterances are representationally complex because they point to realities whose referential ground is not simple, self-evident, or monocultural. Whether the lyric is the best place in which the full creative affordances of this interlinguality can be explored is, of course, a proposition that we are being invited by the author to consider, among other things. We are also being asked to consider the possibilities of the lyric form itself, which does have a public tradition even in Anglo-American poetry, even as the lyric has been traditionally defined as the genre of the private life. An inner meditation or something that we say to ourselves when we are alone, which may also be taken as a kind of script for performance, a lyric poem is so composed as to be spoken by the reader as though she were the one who originated and is now uttering its words. As a genre, it is unique in that it establishes an identification between its speaker and the reader, and acting empathy in the most seamless and intimate way possible at least as far as the literary arts are concerned. What her author presents us today is a suite of poems, but let's just say it's clearly her first piece that dominates the collection and embodies the intent of her poetics best. What she is giving us here is an extended anglophonic text whose qualities trouble not only the lyric tradition's convention of linguistic uniformity, but also its unified effect as premise on the consistency of the lyric voice, the lyric I, whose interiority, 
the lyric form itself seeks to exteriorize by locating it in a dramatic situation in which it must simply come to speak. While there is a lyric speaker and I in this extended code shifting and anaphoric speech, it is diluted almost to the point of unimportance, dispersed across an exhaustive inventory, an arduous cataloging of everyday social evil. As the author explains in her essay, this poem is her attempt to problematize the current national dispensation, which has, alas, also become our national condition. Implicit perhaps in this dissolution of lyric subjectivity is the idea that would seem to be performed throughout the piece, and it is this, the assertion or celebration of individual selfhood, typically what, what a lyric enacts, can only be self-serving and downright selfish in light of the erasure, the annihilation of so many collective others whose precarity the speaker admits to sharing, but only to a certain extent. Reading the piece, we come to realize that it's the privilege afforded to her by this certain extent that counts her among the provisionally fortunate, but by the same token, it is what anguishes her all the more. In this poem, we see the author weaving the speaker's own experience with a third person reportage of horrific news items stitched alongside found textualities drawn from popular culture, like the words of the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy that airs over national radio and television at 3 p.m. every day, a plethora of overhead, overhead bits of information and daily verbal ephemera, so juxtaposed as to form a sardonic pastiche into which are sprinkled fragments of personal narrative and confessions, mostly spoken to an absent ad addressee, which is how the lyric typically unfolds. Nonetheless, this is not, strictly speaking, a lyric poem. What it is, is a hybrid articulation that literary critics in the North have branded as the modern long poem. As a form, it poaches from both the lyric and epic traditions, commingling the former's inwardness with the latter's externality, which is to say its sociality. Anglo-American letters have, of course, given us memorable exemplars of this tradition, with Whitman's Song of Myself and later on Ginsburg's Howl easily coming to my admittedly queer mind. In both these poems, the lyric speaker, the I, seeks to embody a larger communal subjectivity, a feat that the, that the traditional epic, indeed ritualistically, accomplished. In the modern long poem, we see the desire on the poet's part to carry out the epic mandate of presenting and coalescing the plenitude of selves that constitute a collectivity, in this case, the Filipino nation. And yet, the irony is that it can only do this through the agency of the speaker, the poet's own personal and performative self. Clearly in our present day world, characterized as it is by fractiousness and conflict, this imperative creates a quandary of sorts, the poet's individuality trying to speak for and as a plurality. The form of the modern long poem attempts to resolve this by, in the words of the American critic M.A. Bernstein, justifying its argument through the direct appeal of the author's own experiences and emotions. While this poem does not actually lapse into too many confessional passages, the entire work is a personal monologue and its emotional arc is precisely an appeal to the reader to apprehend the portrait of the world that it is presenting through the speaker's own emotive consciousness. All throughout this very long, indeed, frankly speaking, almost insufferably long piece, what's clearly on display is the metronomic oscillation between protest and resignation, between indignation and despondency, which is nothing if not the poem's declared affective ground. What's interesting here is that this oscillation does give way now and then to self-critical or meta moments. And here we need to say that self-reflexivity is also one of the defining features of the contemporary epic. For instance, beset by its own topic's craziness, Ginsburg's Howl is certainly aware of its limitations, trying to capture the spirit of an entire American generation, the brightest minds of which have been and I quote, destroyed by madness, starving hysterical naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn looking for an angry fix, unquote. 
the paradox of trying to speak for a society that is no longer coherent, that is not uniform or harmonious in any way, is the modern long poem's own expression of the crisis of representation. This is a tension that the modern long poem typically registers as insoluble, precisely by troubling its own vocality and by ironizing its own form, usually through the modernist techniques of pastiche and collage. By way of concluding, I'd like to perhaps point out that the various places in which the author turns self-reflexive or meta in her work, such as when she registers an awareness of her works own tediousness, its futility, which in a way is her own futility in the face of the sheer enormity of the crisis that she is trying to protest against and to unpack, can perhaps be rendered more meaningful, more poignant even, by calling into question the very premise of her endeavor and how ethically fraught it is. I'm speaking about the difficult and unremittingly bleak topic of suffering, which seems unique to our author's extended piece. Suffering in Whitman's and Ginsburg's case, for instance, does not absolutely dominate their poem's manifold concerns, which we must recognize finally include the rhapsodic hope in an alternative spirituality, achieved perhaps through the altered state of consciousness that the ingestion of narcotics or the indulgence in heavy forms of casual sex might bestow. This is the suffering that the author, despite her protestations, quietly and protractedly laments. As this poem indirectly puts it, while suffering is always phenomenologically singular, experienced and endured by every person, every human soul, it is also by the sheer impunity, frequency, and randomness in which, it's, in which it is now being inflicted, becoming increasingly commonplace and banal in our midst. This is a paradox productively flagged by the word only, meaning both one and just, with which every strophe of this poem begins. The question to be asked at this point is, how dexterously can the modern long poem treat the topic of suffering when as a form it is characterized by irony, an irony that inheres in the very plausibility of its project, to speak for and as an I, at the same time that it purports to speak for and as a we. As we know, going by the history of consciousness, suffering and lyric representation can no longer be together unproblematically embraced, especially not after the catastrophes, depredations, and urgent and powerful theorizings of the last century, for example, by ethical philosophers like Theodor Adorno, who once famous, famously wrote that, and I quote, to write lyric poetry after Auschwitz is barbaric. Of course, what Adorno meant by this is that no matter how sympathizing, politicized, angry, or committed the enraged writer may be, by the very fact that she is able to write at all, actually, by the simple fact that she exists, despite and after all the horrific and unspeakable atrocities that humanity has inflicted and continues to inflict upon itself, she is already affirming, no matter how grudgingly, that self-same and henceforth irredeemable humanity. Given the unimpe impeachable evidence that it is in the nature of human civilization to be evil, even its ensuing civilized, including artistic and poetic gestures to condemn this evil may not finally absolve it of such a nature. In other words, for Adorno, because holocausts and genocides have already happened, humanity in our day and age is to be taken as simply and unquestionably suspect, and not even art, indeed, especially not representational art, can alter or mollify this suspicion. There is, of course, anti or post-representational art that Adorno implicitly spared or at least bracketed out in his critique and that he explicitly subscribed to. He took up lessons with an avant-garde musician toward the end of his life and even attempted to put together a discombobulating theory of aesthetics. Going by Adorno's example, it is, the perceptual, it is this perceptual register or mode of art that may be able to handle the topic of suffering in an ethically responsive and responsible way. Given the promise of ironic complexity that this piece betokens, a promise revealed to us by the haply gener generativity of the word only, around which it may be seen to conceptually gravitate, it is only all too possible that, after a more structurally ironic, 
possibly truncated and more self-reflexive reworking, this project will more fully realize its potential as a Filipino exemplar of the post-colonial modern long poem, whose protest it performs not just mimetically or lyrically, but also on every level of meaning, through which it may be able to distinguish itself even more. Thank you. All right. Do we go straight away or do we have to wait for some inter musical interlude? <laughs> Okay, I'm supposed to introduce Vix, and I must tell you that um, the better introduction is really in her poetics essay rather than in the bio note. In the bio note, it's just very chica, that she's very grateful to be writing poetry, and she's very grateful to be the mother of Sago. Um, and of course, she also tells us that she's an incoming PhD student in UC San Diego. Vix and I should talk before she leaves because I was um, um, a visiting professor there with the literature uh, department and I have a few pointers to give her <laughs> the people to talk to. I think Ray um, Armand Trout, the very famous language poet is still teaching in UC San Diego and you should talk to her. She's very generous and she's very helpful. And um, so she has basically told us her background uh, she is uh, in the academe, but she's also doing a lot of social and community work, uh, which probably explains partly why she's writing this way, no? why she has a suite like this one that she's presenting to us. Um, she's also written extensively um, uh, in poetry, but a, a kind of theoretically informed poetry, which is why my introduction to her sounded like that. <laughs> I'm really sorry. It's a little more um, academic than normal because, uh, first of all, I, I think that that is what uh, um, might benefit the project. No, it's actually a very uh, theoretically grounded work. No, maraming moments of meta moments, maraming self-reflexive moments. Yung kanyang work, um, and also I think um, it's important to to situate the work within the tradition to which it belongs. No. Meron naman din tayo yung modern long poem tradition in the Philippines. Uh, kaya lang more epic ang tawag natin, eh, like with Cirilio Bautista's trilogy of St. Lazarus, di ba? But uh, the epic is actually, the modern epic, uh, or the contemporary epic, which is, I also call the modern long poem. That's how it's officially termed no, by critics uh, in America and in England, is actually uh, has a very long tradition in Anglo-American poetry. And I think doon din naman humuhugot si Vix, no? Na, narinig rinig mo yung echoes ni Walt Whitman ng konte <laughs> there in, in the work. So anyway, uh, I'd like now to ask Vix to present to us uh, her poetics and also to talk about her poetry suite, One Time, Big Time. Turning over to Vix now. Thank you, Sir Nia. Uh, really um, thankful for that introduction and um, everything that you mentioned. I'll just read um, a, a brief um, rejoinder, like a brief um, essay to support my poetics, um, and I'll, I'll read it now. So I started writing One Time Big Time in August 2017 after Tian de los Santos' death. It started as 100 lines of anaphora done in a graduate CW course I audited. The professor in that class, Shingbi Cruz, suggested to do more. And at that time, it was and at, at the time it was written, the body count of extrajudicial killings was 13,000. So then the question was, why not do 13,000 lines? In one time, big time, I used the device of repeating only as the first word for each line to build on the feeling of hopelessness as one moves through the litany. The initial idea was to write about the death of the Tertes Oplan Tokhang by naming them and including information found in news reports. I then included some of the arguments made for and against the drug war and interspersed it with personal reflections, prayer, pop culture, pop culture references, among others. It also included some measure of awkward poetics, declaring uncertainty several times, this is the self reflexivity there, over whether poetry or literature is the medium for these sentiments. I also included lines solicited from friends and acquaintances who I asked through Facebook Messenger to write for me a living eulogy. The use of anaphora and one time big time was done to provide tension 
as the items in the list are enumerated, the significance of only becomes smaller. So this is the paradoxical structure. But only here is also translated to Filipino as lang naman or merely to highlight how insignificant the lives taken are seemingly to the rest of the country, um, more so at that time or initially you know, in 2016. It is meant to enact the tedium and repetitiveness of this cycle of violence. 500 lines since then in a chapbook after OTBT for short still has not grown. The last time I added to the lines was two years ago. There simply was not enough focus and headspace on my part to see its completion. But now, um, as mentioned, getting ready to leave for a PhD, I want to see it finished. I need to see it finished by the time the Duterte's term ends. I want him to be accountable for all the deaths, tokang, activists, and peasant murders, lawyers, journalists. And though my completion of a group project is such a small trifle thing and will not make a direct or even indirect impact to the ICC investigation or his eventual imprisonment, I still need to document just what it was that happened to us as a people, the majority of whom turned the collective blind eye to these atrocities. The long form is new to me. Most of the stuff I've written are short narrative or lyric poems. There are some who think that long poems, much more book length poetry, are not poems because of the, the loss of lyric intensity. But I find that the long form allows breadth and complexity, that there is no single way of explaining or feeling or narrating. It also allows for a journey or arc. And since I've been working on this since 2017, sees new perspectives as time progresses, the nation shifts, my own sea change. The long poem as a form did not come to me initially, but it makes sense now, not as a gimmick or to make noise, but to remind us of how mass murder has ravaged this nation and the weight of a history of criminality and impunity that has culminated in the present. It's a burden we carry every day. The project is meant to ask, how did we get here? I draw inspiration from other book length works such as Citizen, these are contemporary ones um, by Claudia Rankin and My Life by Lynn Hajinian. Ranking as narratives, musings, surreal situations mixed to form a picture of the constant struggle of race. Eugenian, though she classifies the work as autobiographical, asserts that the world is vast and overwhelming. Each moment stands under an enormous vertical and horizontal pressure of information, potent with ambiguity, meaningful, unfixed, and certainly incomplete, and that it is impossible to get close to the original or to know what really happened, end quote. I hope that in being multivocal and having disparate lines, I can approximate the constant evolving and devolving surrender and negotiation, truth and disinformation that have characterized our experience in the Philippines or Philippine politics. To a certain extent, I am inspired by our own tradition of the epic, though this project is nowhere near the techniques of the traditional epic. For future content, as I write the next 12,500 lines, I hope to bring in more historical, um, sound bites, overheard lines, quotes from the news from Filipino pop culture. I'm also thinking of inserting a specific narrative that one can follow in each page, maybe, if only to anchor it. This workshop is a chance for me to collaborate with fellows and panelists, if they wish, <laughs> by soliciting only lines from them to include in the work and truly make it a myriad of voices. My concerns and questions are not at all far from the usual concerns in writing. They revolve around the following audience connected to this is publisher, content, organization, language, and stance. So for audience or reader, who will read this? How will I sustain the reader's interest? Connected to this is a question of publication, who is going to publish a 500-page book of anaphora if there is no market or no reader. Um, content, what else do I include? Am I lacking in talking about certain things when looking at the subject? So these are some of my questions that maybe some of our panelists and fellows can also help me reconcile. Um, organization, do I need to organize the lines in some way as it is now? I just add and add to it and write whatever comes to mind. Do I structure it like a novel? Do I include more deliberate patterns? Um, language, is this best written in English? Can I keep mixing Filipino and English? Do I write it in Filipino instead? Um, and finally, stance. Is the stance problematic because it is ambivalent? Am I speaking for others? What right do I have to talk about this? So these are just some of the concerns. I hope the work workshop will help me resolve or deepen my understanding of. I am open to suggestions for direction as well as other considerations I may have been blinded to when writing and conceptualizing. Thank you again for your time and effort in reading the manuscript. I know it wasn't easy. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Vix. Okay, so now we begin the open forum or the discussion of your manuscript, no? 
uh, my job is moderator and um, I will supposedly be prompted in the chat box by the order at which uh, our participants wish to speak. So wala pa ako nakikita na gusto magsalita. <laughs> wala pa dito sa ating chat box. But I think, Vix, di ba? Uh, you brought it up in your uh, short presentation just now that you are seeking advice uh, regarding very specific uh, questions no? that you are mulling. Um, it's clear that you still want to keep working. Can I be heard? Am I? Is it okay? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So it's clear that um, uh, you are uh, aware that uh, this kind of work might not have a very ready audience. Uh, the reason is that as it is, di ba mahaba na siya? Tapos you're supposed to make pa 10,000 more lines. Right? Is 12, that what you're saying? 12,500 pa. <laughs> so yun ang plano. <laughs> So it's really it's uh it's it's really a niche kind of uh work that you are trying to produce, no? Na it's as probably as niche as language poetry, conceptual poetry, objectivist poetry, uh, all these different sort of like um difficult, you know, not very popular kinds of poetry. Um, do you sense kano yung magtatanong, no? That there might be a contradiction between between the political uh, imperative that you're working under and uh, the, the actual constraints imposed by the difficulty of your form. In other words, uh, how can you uh, operationalize uh, the kind of protest that you want to uh, uh, put across in this work if, it, if the work itself will not even be read by as many people as possible. So that's my question to Vix. I have no answer. <laughs> I don't know, Sir Neil. Um, I don't know if you know. No? Um, and I don't want to think it's not, it's a project that, that should not be done or not worthwhile. Um, but you know, maybe it can't act, it cannot act like, you know, an immediate protest or something. No? Wala, wala, there's no, there's no way um, that that can happen, especially since you know we're almost we're close to the Duterte leaving office, hooray! Um, but but yeah, I I don't know. I just want to do it. <laughs> As it is, Diva, I don't know if you picked up on my last paragraph. My suggestion is actually to rework it and make it shorter. Yeah, you, you want it to be longer. Right. <laughs> Sige, but, sir, I will certainly consider that and, and look at my options. Thank you. Yeah. There, if if what you want to do is to gesture toward the the the, the uh, just the insufferably long litany, diba, of offenses and evil, no, perpetrated by this administration. You need not actually yourself write something insufferably long. It can be because there are many there are many uh, tools in the poet's uh, toolbox that you can use in order to evoke that kind of uh, uh, length, no? Uh, without actually um, literalizing it. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will. I know. I will. I know. That's just. Make you na tayo. Uh, the first one is uh, Cupcake and then Pipai, Roland, Edward, and Luna in that order. Okay? Eric after Luna. All right. So get, there you go. So we begin with Cupcake. Uh, hi, congratulations, Vix. Napaka endurance level nung unang tula. Actually, yun yung uh, uh, magiging mong kahi ko na kung meron kang uh, hihinga ng payo, baka si Sir Vim. Kasi parang endurance performance tong unang pyesa, baka gusto mong i-record tas nakaloop sa, say, sa isang space like YouTube or um, kasi 
while I was reading it, talagang it required effort, no? I mean, iniisip ko kung ako ba yung uh, ako, ako ba yung casual reader pag tsatsagaan ko to. Kasi tinagsagaan ko siya bilang responsibility as a fellow. Pero naisip ko uh, I would um, tune into these performance pieces where um, the poet It's like say si Richie, our friend si Richie Guevara from UST, would perform hours of um, menial tasks. Talagang endurance talaga siya. Um, I was wondering kung that would appeal to you na gawin siyang performance piece na hindi naman necessary like bonggang ano, production number like Richie. Pero talagang I feel may space dun for for yung litanya as uh, Sir Neil calls it. Tapos, um, I would also call out a minor discussion I had with um, Sir Egay Samar about language. Kasi sabi niya, kung hindi siya nasa Filipino, nasa Tagalog, um, sino ba yung target audience niya? Tapos, I feel na yung only dito kaya lang di ba eh kaya lang naglumab na lumaban kaya lang tumakbo kaya lang uh, club foot siya so it's very filipino in that manner na i never hindi ako nagduda na filipino ito so napaka uh, naalala ko yung mga uh, tula ni Langston Hughes na wala silang pakialam sa English. Ito yung wika ng mga uh, ng mga African American experience. So I think dumadami naman yung mga gantong tula na nasa danas ng mga English speaking Filipinos. So napaka matagumpay. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat Cupcake. Ang susunod ay si Pipay. Hi Pip. What up? <laughs> uh, long time, no? Kasi nakasama kita nung pinata natin yung mga chapbooks natin sa BLDX four years ago. So that was the first time that I've read the work and this is the first time that I've gone back to it in within those four years. I I read it in one sitting because the there's something about the rhythm of it that just once you're into it, you're really into it. You can't leave And I'm, I'm curious about the experience that will be if it's going to be another 12,000 lines. But I know, I mean, it's not like things got any better. It's not like things got, got any better since you published the first draft of this, right? Not with the, not with the poem, but the, with our lives. And who could have, who could have uh, predicted that we'd be, we'd be here in lock, locked down in our homes? And uh, experiencing this level of misery, you know. Um, I actually have one question because I wanted to pick at your brain a, uh, a little bit, and then I have one suggestion. Uh, first, my question is: You may have answered this in passing in your presentation, but still, I'm wondering if did you have an initial scheme for how you plotted down? The lines did you did you do it something like one per day how did you compile what was your initial scheme of putting them all together in a way that ha, like how how it's plotted out now how did you get to that point now it it established that kind of rhythm for itself did you did you write down one every day or 10 every day And then, did you revisit it when it was something like 1,000 already? And then, did you kind of mix it up, or was it really completely spontaneous? I'm asking that because I'm also interested in the in the game plan. What the game plan will be for the next uh, 12,000, if you're really going to pursue that route. And then, the second thing that I wanted to bring up was more of a suggestion. Um, Now that our modes of literary production, also in literary consumption, are very different than how they would be, since we're all just here at home, but we're interested, but in in each other's works, I think there's a lot of potential also with um, to bring up the new cupcake. Uh, if you want to adapt it to something like what Richie does, 
something adaptational. Um, this is just a, just an example related to something that I'm doing, although my project is a little more cheerful in nature. Ever since I started playing the guitar last year, I upload a vlog every day. Why not? If you have the script, if you have the finished script already, pwede kang uh, magbukas ng channel or Facebook page and then you share a certain number of lines or something every day para rin, and, and you just see how long you can keep up that rhythm so that even if you don't know if someone will be able to sit down and read this piecemeal, although I would argue that for the rhythm, I, I read it in one sitting, I think it's possible. How do you want it to be consumed? If you want to feed the public something like excerpts of it, how would you want to curate those excerpts? And what would you want? What are the little bits and pieces that you'd want to see from it? If, if it's an option for them to consume it in little bits and pieces. So there's that possibility. But um, of course, it will be possible when it's when it's written down. So I support getting maybe to that 12,000 and then deciding on what you could potentially do with it, not just in print, but outside of the world of print. That's it for me. Thank you. Maraming salamat, uh, Pipay. Actually, you know, that's very interesting. Uh, uh, just to stress it so that uh, Vix will not forget it. Uh, what's being offered is the possibility of a transmedial um, platform or a format for the actual work that it need not be a book. It can actually be a video. And Pipa is sort of elaborating on that possibility by saying it can be piecemeal video. Because if it's a durational video siya, uh, and 13,000 lines, nga siya, that's going to take probably several hours. No? So mas, pwede siguro, you can actually have uh, different sort of like segments or parts of that duration. And then you will actually have premieres of that no? uh, during special times. No? And that you will, uh, the schedule you will uh, announce beforehand. So there are many possibilities. Why is the transmedial possibility a good one to consider, Vix? Because it, the modern long poem is actually trying to combine the lyric tradition with the epic tradition. And the epic tradition, as you know, is chanted, diba? Uh, like epics are chanted. And um, uh, your idea of the pastiche while sounding postmodern or modernist Actually, if you think about it, a, a work that is a pastiche is uh, uh, cribbing from different works, no? from different authors, from different texts. And an epic has no singular or single author. It's a communal authorship. No? All epics are actually authored by a community, not just by a chanter. The chanter is the vessel of that, but the, the, the wisdom... The stories, the characters are coming from his or her own culture. And so it's, it's very clearly an epic kind of project no, that you are trying to do. Um, and so the possibility of something chanted, something performed, something uh, transmedial is very likely. No? And uh, do consider that. Anyway, you're going to UC San Diego and very avant-garde and very experimental ang um, creative writing program to on. <laughs> so you're going to encounter people who will actually probably give you suggestions like that also. So after uh, Pipai, now is Roland, to be followed by Edward, Luna, Eric, and Mary Ann. Um, nagusto ko yung uh, project, no? Um, dahil gusto ko yung uh, accessibility ng bits and pieces uh, only and even the shorter points, no? Um, it is very accessible, um, hindi difficult ma, ma kuha yung bits and pieces. No? Uh, I also like the arbitrariness. Uh, pwede yung basa magsimula ka sa middle, sa last part, sa first part. So walang linearity, walang demand for um, the usual um, reading of points. No? Kasi um, it's a compendium. 
an ongoing compendium of um, lines. No? Um, but I th also think that there's something very um, insightful about the long and the short points in the project. No? Uh, it's a long poem. Um, I think um, it's very self-reflexive. When we say only as a kind of first line, no? there's uh, we talk about solely, exclusivity, single, alone, solitary, but obviously it is not. So it defies its own agenda of setting forth the condition in which um, what will follow next um, can happen only um, in singularity. No? No? Kasi repeat naman siya multiple times or uh, infinite times. No? So gusto ko yun. Ang suggestion ko, um, uh, in terms of language, do not be too conscious kung magalo yung English and Filipino. Who cares? No? Uh, lahat man tayo bilingual readers for most part, so it does not affect us. No? Uh, second, um, sa issue ng organization, I feel na pwede mo talagang i-organize. Lalo na if you're commanding 12,000 lines uh, or sentences, you really have to organize into, in, into smaller sections um, based on um, clustering of only uh, in terms of um, um, personal effect, in terms of um, uh, uh, anyway, kung ano yung uh, gusto mong uh, sections. No? And third, yung, yung, yung issue mo sa stand, if you're um, representing those that are represent, under, uh, those who are not able to represent themselves, Sa akin, malino naman sa introduction mo, yung positionality mo. I think uh, if, this, if this comes out in a book, then clearly it marks off where you're coming from and where yeah, the text uh, you produce is also coming from. My suggestion, uh, dahil at importante yung project na to, no? I've just seen the film Song of um, Names, Song of Names, no? uh, na ang, ang ginawa, dinivide yung uh, lahat na namatay sa Poland, yung World War II na Jews, divide into four rabbis to memorize and, and, to, and in, in to, to recite into a litany of songs para ma-master nila. Kind of epic ba? Uh, pero may randomness. Yung basa, basa ang punto lang naman, masabi nila lahat na namatay at nakadivide yun accordingly. So mahalaga yung project na to, parang in memoriam sorts, no? kahit na uh, wala naman direct ang kinalaman nito doon sa uh, victims or of sorts. Ang suggestion ko naman is to come up with a Twitter account of uh, one time, big time, and release this individually. I think it's going to be, uh, uh, you're going to find a younger audience uh, interested in it. May kinawa ko dating Twitter account na tungkol lahat sa pag-ibig. Ang pag-ibig ay parang shop, ang pag-ibig ay parang writing workshop, etc. And it took off for some time. Pero mahirap pag magsula tungkol sa pag-ibig at this time of the pandemic. So you might want to reach another kind of audience that hindi print at yung uh, hindi rin linear na page one to the last page the class in the reading, but a different kind of audience that uh, emphasizes yung project mo nga dito. So I, I'd go for, uh, nagahanap na ng multimedia platform exploration, I'd go for a Twitter account uh, for this. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Roland. All right. Next is Edward. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, actually, hindi ako mahilig ma magbasa ng tula na English. Eh. Pero nang napasa ko ito, natuwa talaga ako. No? Uh, uh, palagay ko, hindi lang siya, it's not only a question of tinatago mo sa wikang English yung kritisismo sa isang namamayaning takbo ng lipunan eh, no? ng isang umiiral na sistema ng gobyerno sa Pilipinas hindi lang ginagamit mo yung Ingles uh, para kasi pag gumamit ka naman ng diretsong Pilipino, Tagalog, Pilipino lokal na lengguay eh, kapansin-pansin niya, kasama ka kagad sa listahan na mariret tag pero ito palagay ko kasi tingin ko malaki rin ang Pilipino communities abroad Malaki yung komunidad ng mga Pilipino sa abroad. Tapos ikalawa, talaga nasa panahon tayo ng digital media. At halos lahat ng kabataan ay gumagamit nito. Kaya malaking bagay din yung nasabi na na it could be a shorter, pwedeng Twitter or series, and then it could be clustered into the thoughts. Itong thought na to has to do with this, and then succeeding. Y yun lang naisip ko. Uh, na Nakaroon din ako last year kasi ng similar experience. I wrote a play. Uh, through, dito kami, dito kami, Gary Hurst, 
Uh, it's a Philippine Colorado uh, theater production ano, dito. Nagsusulat ako sa English. Pero pagdating sa kanila, iba daw yung syntax nila, iba yung pamamaraan. So, we change the dialogue. nag adjust kami kung paano nila sabihin. Sa so, madaling sabi, parang ang tingin ko, meron kang Filipino English na mga Pilipinong narito. Pero once na doon ka na, yung mga Pilipinong naroon, may sarili silang Filipino English kung paano nila i-deliver. Kaya, we, we, we have to consider that. Ano pa siya? Uh, pero uh, sa whole, parang uh, yung nuances, yung flavor ng Pinoy, nararamdaman ko habang binabangas ako yung only. No? In fact, uh, the title is one big time, one time big time. Feeling ko nga, da, mas ang title nila, only in the Philippines. No? <laughs> Kasi this is a concrete practice. So what is happening in the Philippines without necessarily pointing at the gana, sino may, may sala, but you can picture exactly what is happening. And this is a big... Uh, way na para even Filipino communities, lalo na yung kabataan, to get involved uh, sa panahong lalo na ang hirap maglabas ng opinion sa Pilipinas, you have some support Filipino communities to raise issue of what is happening in the Philippines. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat sa magandang tuna. Thank you, sir. Edward, Luna, Eric, and Marianne now. Hello. Um... Hindi ko na uulitin kung ano na yan mga nasabi kanina. Uh, particularly kung paano nila nagustuhan ang accessibility ng tula at saka ang registers ng, ng wikang ito. Gusto ko lang dagdagan kasi parang yung, yung wika na nakarehistro nga sa, sa pagkakasulat mo, Vix, pwede pang ma-expand. Binanggit kanina ni uh, Nap Arcelia na sana may regional din kahit pa paano uh, hindi dahil token ha pero kung, kung pakikinggan mo naman aleatory hindi ba meron naman tayo na papakinggan na ibang wika bukod sa Tagalog o Filipino so baka makakabuti para sa proyekto mo ang uh, pakikinig din may ibang yung um judgment di ba may mga ganung uh, tagtagal lang ng konting ganun para mas um kumalat yung class base din nung ano nung sinusulat mo at ang dami kong nagustuhan ng mga linya ang uh, site ko na lang yung yung parang at least tatlo na nagustuhan ko yung may polaroid only the black eye sets in like a polaroid uh, at saka yung I want to buy bots for the dead at saka yung only Rex was given his toddler for shield I I love those touches uh, in your poem. And uh, parang if there's a certain arbitrariness, alam naman natin, dinidesign din yan. Mukha lang siyang arbitrary, but it's not. Uh, may mga parts dun sa tula na parang may pare-parehas na tinig. Parang pare-parehas yung pattern. So I suggest na para lang magkaroon ng uh, further tension yung mga parts na yun, gula-gulatin mo ng mga only the Polaroid, yung mga ganun ba? Para kumalat siya at hindi, may mga parts kasi yung tula na um, I guess, uh, and if I, I hope you don't mind me saying, na medyo, medyo parang weak yung mga links na yon as compared to the earlier, the first five pages perhaps, or the last two pages of the, of the work. Uh, and um, I, I don't know kung naalala niyo si Rafael de la Costa, like the Mola Bear. Ang layo na talaga ng pinatunguhan ng, ng, uh, ng tulamo from that uh, tradition. And uh, I, I, I really admire um, the work and, and what you're trying to do with your collection. And uh, I like that the collection is not, not just composed of long works, but also uh, short ones. So uh, gusto ko yung merong ganong variety. At kung sakaling matipon mo ito, bibiling ko tong libro mo ito. Salamat. Salamat po, Ma'am Luna. <laughs> Alright, maraming salamat. Uh, the next one, please. Ako po. Okay. Eric po. Yan. Vix, ang ganda. Ang ganda nito. Actually, nagustuhan ko siya. Uh, aminado naman tayo na hindi siya light red na Uh, just in turn na uh, yung sa sa kanyang haba sa kanyang haba na tama naman yung mga concern nila pero 
nagustuhan ko rin yung sinabi ni Sir Roland na uh, oo, oh, ang haba niya, ang dami niya. Pero pwede mo nga naman talagang ibaba at balikan anytime. Pwede kang mag-pick somewhere. So, pwede pa din. Ang ganda-ganda. Actually, ako ay nagandahan at hindi lang sa ganun. Eh, nakita ko din yung kahalagahan niya. Kahalagahan niya. Kasi ako ang na, natutunan ko din naman sa ating mga guru no? na yung pagsusulat, ang kahalagahan din ito talaga is pagtatala ng mga pangyayari ng ating panahon. So, na, na-imagine ko siya na isa siya sa mga works na yung mag-age well yung ka nga nila. Um, so, pag dumating tayo sa pagkakataon o sa panahon na, na aarali natin itong itong madilim na era na to na ating pinagdadaanan ngayon ay isa to sa mga essential na mga uh, basahin na ta- ta- tamang basahin. Um, tapos sobrang nag-agree din ako sa mga sinabi na actually uh, natuwa ako na madami ding nakaisip, no? Kasi na nung nung binabasa ko ito, na imagine ko siya in a different form. So, hindi siya nagtatapos sa uh, tula. So, uh, um, natuwa ako sa sinabi ni Cupcake na, na parang pwede siyang gawing performance, something, ganyan, ganyan. Yung sa akin, ang na-imagine ko kasi nun, what if, is, bawat isang tula, ay, bawat isang linya na ito, ay isang pahina na may illustration. So, when, when, when we say illustration, hindi lang naman drawing, no? pwedeng photography, pwedeng ano. So, parang kahit na itong piece na, na sinabmit mo sa workshop, Uh, substantial na to para maging isang libro agad. No? Um, pwede din halimbawa interpretation per, per line ay interpretation ng iba't ibang visual artists or iba't ibang artists. Uh, at hindi rin nagtatapos sa print. Sabi nga ni uh, si Aniata ang nagsabi nito. Si, si Pipay nagsabi. Hindi siya nagtatapos sa print. Uh, na-imagine ko nga din siya na audiovisual. So yun nga, patuloy ng sinabi ni Sir Neil Um, hindi man buo, pero pwede siyang per line eh, merong, merong interpretation na uh, presented uh, visually or sa video. Ganun. So, uh, yun. Ako ay nagandahan. Nagandahan talaga ako. Pero lahat naman ng concern ng ating mga panelists at mga fellow ay talagang valid at uh, makakatulong sa, sa kung ano man yung magiging decision mo in the future. Pero huwag kang ma-discourage kung uh, whatever kasi Uh, mahalaga siyang pyesa. Kailangan natin siya. Salamat. Salamat, Sir Eric. Okay, Mary Anna. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, when I read the, the first poem, yung One Time Big Time, what really struck me is how yung pagka-structure niya talaga yung litany talaga because we have a litany of saints na we're just we just keep invoking the names of the saints na hindi naman natin hindi naman inexplain sa atin bakit ganun yung naging sequence ng mga pangalan nila and kung ano patron saint sila ng kung ano so parang itong poem na ito it's just nouna nga hinahanapan ko siya ng kasi masyadong mahaba so I was looking for a kind of progression or a sort of escalation of horror pero walang escalation or progression ako nakita ang nakita ko lang parang litanya lang siya ng horrors like what Sir Neil mentioned earlier uh, so ganon and I think kasi parang I was thinking about uh, the possible intentions of Dix and siguro gusto niya lang kasi i-capture yung discombobulated thought process of someone who's caught up in a war that makes absolutely no sense. How do we make sense of the senseless? So there is no method to that. Kasi senseless nga eh. So what we do is we try to implant the senseless into our own personal narrative that presumably makes sense. Tapos because this is a social event, or it's a social phenomena or a social unfolding, a systemic unfolding, yung personal narrative natin, in-implot din natin into the narrative about the nation, which also presumably makes sense. But it does not. So parang may layer siya of discombobulation din. Nagka-layer-layer na yung lack of sense. So if, if, if I take that into context, 
this poem works as is. Pero ang tanong, yun ba talaga ang intention ni Vix? Or is it just me overreading or overreaching my own interpretation into the poem? Because if this is the intention, baka kailangan lagyan ng element of uh, absurdity. Kasi kung, kung ganun, parang yung mga lines, although it's some lines are really good, napaka-poetic niya, some lines are also prosaic, especially mga lines that are discussing yung uh, uh, someone she knows or a friend na may mga ganun, prosaic yung ibang lines, poetic naman yung ibang lines. So, um, maybe doon sa lines na medyo prosaic, okay, mag, mag-add ng element of either absurdity, something like that, para, para mas ma-embody yung lack of sense of what's going on. So, um, tapos ang isa ko pang na-appreciate doon, napaka-glaring kasi yung use ng only. Kasi ang pagkakaintindi ko lang, sabi nga ni Cupcake, yung, yung uh, kaya lang. Ako naman, ang pagkakaintindi ko lang doon sa only is the, the lang, just lang. Parang um, yung mga faithful lang. And then from that, ganun na yung pagkagamit niya ng word na only na transliterated from lang. Because I think kasi yung, yung lang usually nilalagay natin yun at the end of the sentence pag Tagalog na lang. Pero if it's if we use the word only, we can put it in any place in the sentence and it will still work. Hindi kagaya nung lang na pag last lang siya. Kasi parang pinitrivialize mo lang siya. You state a sentence and then you trivialize it by saying lang. Or you limit the effect of the sentence or the gravitas of the sentence by putting lang. Pero pag ginamit mo yung only, you can insert it anywhere in the sentence. Pero kay Vix, deliberate yung pag-use niya ng only at the beginning of the sentence. So, kaya yung lang, only, now becomes ironic kasi it's the leading word. Leading na siya na sa una pa lang, there is uh, Uh, kind of parang minamak niya yung pag-trivialize kasi hindi naman talaga trivial yung nangyayari. So those are just the uh, yung mga na nakukuha ko from the poem. And now that after people have mentioned yung in, sabi nga ni Sir Neil yung inter uh, inter tra, transmedia platform nakikita ko na yon pero when I was reading the poem I was merely looking at how it will work as is. Pero baka maka-add doon sa effectivity ng poem kung lagyan mo siya ng konting grouping ba? Parang something that I am I'm grasping for words. Parang merong effort to cascade. Parang meron siyang flow. Kasi as is, wala siyang wala siyang parang wala siyang progression, wala siyang trajectory. Um, so, kasi inisip ko rin, maybe that's her intention. But if it's not her intention, baka pwedeng ilagyan mo lang siya ng konting structure para nagkakaskade siya na parang nag-rise to a crescendo or maybe it gets into a wave and then dies down. Parang may ganun na moment ba? So, that's, that's just my take on that. Pero it was really, really moving. I was really moved by it kasi it's the reality that we face every single day. The threat is there to all of us every day. It's a living threat. So thank you for bringing it to life. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Marianne. We have last two reactors na kasi 10 minutes na lang. Less, ta- less than 10 minutes na now, actually. no. So we have Bowman and then Vim after Bowman. Uh, actually, uh, I'll just give time to Vix na lang. Uh, mamaya na lang ako mag, uh, mag-share. Okay. May roundtable naman tayo, no? We can bring up more things there, no? Uh, si Vim. I'm sure mahaba yung kay Vim. <laughs> Vim, ikaw na. Nawala si Vim. 
Okay. No, then. But I think it's it's clear that um, ang paulit-ulit na sinasabi is if uh, Vix wants this to stay as it is, meaning a print work, then probably um, there can be a way to have an organizational, to put place an organizational principle somewhere that will actually guide the flow of the catalog, no? Because it's an inventory of, of, of social evil, eh? and maybe the social evil can be shaped the inventory can be shaped a certain way so that you have some kind of movement, di ba? Think of uh, Song of Myself by Walt Whitman. Meron siyang mga subtopics. Meron siyang divisions, di ba? And maybe that will work. Uh, nandito na ba si Vim? Ay, ako na ba? Wala pa yan. <laughs> sorry. Wala. 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 Okay, sorry, um, naalala ko nung 1998, nagkaroon tayo ng Centennial Literary Prize. Sa isang inuman, pagkatapos, may nag-comment na judge, alam mo ang daming sumulat ng mahaba pero naubusan ng kininga o naubusan ng gas. So, ang naisip ko agad sa pagbasa kay Vix, eh, sana may plano o sana may disenyo gaya ng blow baguettes. So, yung B, yung battery. Ito ang bodega ng kaalaman, kaya mahalaga ang pagsasaliksik o pre-writing. Kasi sa karanasan din natin lahat, no, kapag mahal, pag pinahalagahan mo Vix yung pre-writing, yung writing process, chicken feed eh. No, kasi parang ang dami na ng laman ng utak mo, yung pagsusulat, that, madulas na lalabas na lang kasi ang dami mo ng uh, informasyon. L, lights. So ito ang patnubay o gabay kung saan ka pupunta pag madilim o di malina o di maliwanag ang nangyayari. Dumadaan tayo doon kapag may mahaba tayong sinusulat, di ba? Hindi natin alam kung saan pupunta ka kanang kaliwa, dedereso, urong, atras, Di ba? Kaya mahalaga ang disenyo. No? I'm a sucker for structure eh. Nung bago tayo magsisimula, ginay-disenyo mo muna. Alam. And you can also write backwards. No? Vix, wala naman. Ano naman to? Kung, kung dissertation mo to, gawin mo muna yung ending, yung alam mo yung destination mo, and write backwards. No? Maraming possibilities. No? Letter O, oil. Ito ang pampadulas o ito ang natutuhan sa pagbabasa at pagsusulat palagi. Kumbag ka learning by doing. Uh, w, water. Ito ang buhay at pampalamig din na kapag mainit. So alam mo, yung sinabi kanina, kanina uh, kailan na uh, itataas, kailan bababa, Tinitimpla mo lahat yun eh sa isang mahabang tula. Kahit di naman sa haiko sa talaga eh. Ay, yun, yun ang magagandang training kapag nasanay ka doon sa maikli. Ibabatakin mo lang naman yun eh. Kaya, kaya mahalaga yung pagsasanay. Eh. Hindi tira ng tira. No? Uh, letter B, break. Ito ang pagpapaniniwalang ligtas o alam mong may preno o alam mong kung saan ka babagal o saan ka bibilis at saan ka titigil. Letter A, air. Ito rin ang pagpapatagal magpapatagal sa iyo kaya sana may pacing no parang sa scientific swimming di ba pinaplano mo kung kailan ka hihinga kailan ka kakampay kailan ka kaliwa pinaplano mo lahat yun no sa sa mga stances mo no uh, letter G no gas ito ang nagpapaandar kaya alam mo ang dami ng gatong mo o kung reserva mo dapat may reserva ka palagi letter E engine ito ang konduktor ng isang malaking orkestra kaya nandyan sa dulo sana ang orchestration yung bomba na tinatawag no? kasi minsan uh, nauna yung bomba mo sa umpisa wala ka na pala sa huli alam ni Sir Rio yan staying power di ba ni Sir Jimmy no? Ah, letter T, tire. Ito ang nagpapagulong o ito yung mga taktika para hindi ka maging boring. Dito pumapasok ang papel ng tayutay o figures of speech o tropes. No? Uh, letter S, self. Ito na naman ako. Uh, jerking. No? Nasaan ba ang mapa mo? <laughs> Kaya tinanong ko kanina. Kaya sana, mahalaga yung paghahanda at pagsasanay. No? At Uh, siguro yung psychological advice natin, yung visualization, ano, i-visualize mo itsura ng tula mo. No? I, uh, bago ka mag-umpisa. No? Uh, sa tingin ko, yun lang. Sana makatulong. Okay. 
we've been focusing on the on the long, long poem, no? But uh, Bix also has short poems, and the short poems are not so problematic. Uh, and she actually does not talk about them much in her poetics, no? But they're actually more confessional poems, no? I particularly like her poem about motherhood and and uh, the fear she has that her child is uh, has been mortally afflicted much too young, diba? Right? By, by seeing that uh, or by learning about that story with the elephant. Um, uh, and of course, that cat poem is also about mortality, no? So merong theme naman yung kanyang collection, even if the short poems uh, are not as, um, uh, what's the word now? obtrusive <laughs> obtrusive as the very long poem which really it dominates the whole thing but um i think since we're wrapping up now uh before i i pass uh I give the floor again to vix no so that she can give us her her last comments no um i do want to say that as it is uh the organizing principle that i that i identified clearly in the work is the attempt to be meta about the whole thing. Um, it is always a dangerous proposition to talk about suffering, particularly the suffering of other people. Um, Adorno is just one of the many philosophers who have actually flagged <laughs> this problem as an ethical problem in aesthetics. Uh, Dix is uh, looking to art, no? for reprieve for consolation for an answer no to to her question no about um how is how is it how it is to live no how to li- how it is to live in this moment in history when you have so much precarity and so much suffering uh everywhere and because she wants to look to art no for for a reprieve, for a solution, for an answer, then she has to problematize aesthetics. No? And she has to look at aesthetic theory. Uh, and I, I pointed her in the direction of Adorno, and I hope she pursues that. Anyway, she's going to UC San Diego, where all of this will be her problem. <laughs> you cannot just vix, talk about suffering so easily. That's the point, okay? That there are ethical responsibilities, no? Of for the artist who wishes to, to take on the topic of suffering. And um, in your poem now, as it is, meron ka ng self-reflexivity, no? Now and then, the poem actually points, flags its own futility. Now and then, the poem is saying, this is just words. Now and then, it's saying it's a bad poem. Now and then, it's saying, uh, these are just lines. <laughs> okay? So it's actually, that is the organizing sort of like uh, principle that I'm seeing. And what I am requesting uh, when I made that presentation is actually to heighten or intensify that organizing principle some more. Diba? Because whether you like it or not, Vic, say you actually are very representational in your depiction of suffering. You are giving little snippets uh, that are actually mimetic, that actually try to capture uh, and describe no, the suffering of other people. Maybe there is a way to ironize, to complicate that presentation so that, in fact, you're also reflexive even there. No? So that is my parting suggestion to Vix, which is really a rep- repetition of what I said in my intro. And uh, I think everyone is encouraging you to not abandon the project, but to think about possible platforms and, and modalities that the project can be delivered as or in, uh, not just as print, but actually as performed and uh, use the transmedial platform if you wish to, since it's actually part of our historical reality, no? Zooming, everything is on the, on the, on the internet, no? So actually you can use that too. Uh, so now I'm gonna turn the floor over to Vix again for some final remarks. Thank you, Sir Neil. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that po nang sinabi ninyo, sobrang inabsorb ko siya at tinikdown ko po. Uh, hindi na pa ako magsasalita. I, I'm not gonna respond to each of the comments. It's gonna take a while. Um, I, I don't feel that I really need to because um, those are all parang similar naman yung mga naging comments. So, 
I guess I just have like one question. Siguro I'll point it na lang to Sir Neil kasi um, yun nga, may manuscript is not, eh, siyempre yung nasubmit ko sa workshop ay only a part because we're only allowed how many pages. But um, what I did uh, in my manuscript for, for my thesis in 2019 was a mix nga of the short and then of course this very long obtrusive poem <laughs> uh, in the beginning. I wonder lang sir kasi yun nga parang I, I submitted it to the UP Press. Hindi ko pinafollow up, sir. As sabi ko lang. Pero I, I wonder lang if, you know, as it is, and like with the other short poems, if that is something that can be, you know, if it's publishable, um, if it doesn't go to the 13,000 man or what, and I just keep the 500 lines that I have for now and reorganize them, keep working on having that self-reflexivity um, as an organizing principle, as a guide, um, and then yun nga, parang work on the other poems to uh, the shorter ones. Parang, I'm thinking kasi in terms of like page count, that's still gonna be uh, a bit longer than the usual collection. Pero baka may mga pwedeng tanggalin na nga or whatever. Pero I, I guess my question is, <laughs> okay lang ba siya, sir? Like, kaya ba siyang, is that some, is it publishable? Or, because <laughs> I don't know, parang do I need to, um, ayun, ayun po. Kasi I guess this is part of also coming from Dahil nga nasa academe tayo, I have to come out with my first book, mga ganyang bagay. So, <laughs> hindi na parang pinipilit talaga. No? Pero what, what what do I need to do pala? To, siguro yun yung question. What do I need to do to make it publishable? <laughs> Meron comment, matagal daw ang review process, no? At we, we subject it to an editorial review, Vix. Eh. So, uh, UP Press is open to manuscripts of all sorts, including this kind of manuscript. And the result is is actually not to be predicted, cannot be predicted by me. Diba? It, it depends uh, yes, on how sir. the editorial review Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think that because you have a very good barometer of the reaction of, of a very astute, an astute group of Anglophone writers and readers here. By the way, when I say Anglophone writing, uh, Anglophone readership, I mean, everyone who can read texts in English no, in the Philippines. And that doesn't, in, that includes people who don't write in English, but actually read. no. So I think the whole university is Anglophone, diba? We all can read works in English. This is a select group of writers, no? Uh, this is a good barometer now of how that review. So if some of us found it too long, then probably ganun din na mangyayari. Um, 500 lines is actually still okay kasi modern long poem pwede yan eh. Pero siguro if we if operationalize the suggestions on some kind of organization, some kind of shaping or design, then the, the reader will not be lost too much and there will be less of that sense of tedium that many of us got no, reading it. Kasi as it is now, may randomness nga siya na siguro part and parcel naman of the idea of it, no? how random violence is, how random evil is. But at the same time, it's art already, not life. Eh. So what is a poem? A poem is not life. It is arranged life. <laughs> you have to arrange the life so that it actually has a shape. Diba? And part of the consideration in shaping it will be also uh, thinking about your reader diba? and what, the, what will best more or less communicate to the reader. So that I, I, I managed, I slogged through it, diba? and I managed to read it. It's fine. Uh, but you see, it is actually troubling. Eh? It is not just because it's long. It is, an, it is an unremitting list of evil. Diba? And uh, how, just how much uh, evil can you take? <laughs> When I brought up the example of Howell and Whitman, they were also talking about suffering, but there were moments of, there were visionary moments of hope in these long poems. In any modern, in any traditional epic, may hope. In any traditional epic, may transfigured reality. So even if the reality being described is violent, it's sad, it's miserable, the, the, the epic actually has a vision that transfigures it. Siguro, that can be another sort of consideration, Vix, in revising it. Am yes. I still, can you still hear me? Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. But anyway, 
uh, kulang din siya ng gano'n, ng, ng idea of a kind of uh, redemption. <laughs> I know, it's hard, di ba? But maybe the collection, not this one piece. Maybe this one piece can be bleak, right? But if you have a collection, maybe the other pieces will actually have a footnote to that. You read The Howl by Ginsberg, meron siya footnote to Howl. And the footnote to Howl is the anaphora there is holy, 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 puro holy. It's really spirituality that that book, that that poem is trying to, to present as an alternative to the madness and the misery and the violence no, that it, it starts with. So that kind of movement towards light, away from the darkness, just as a general kind of description, might help actually also make the piece uh, uh, read better and communicate across better to the reader. I hope that helps. Yes, sir. Sir, um, okay. may, may note sa po sa chat na si Sir Jimmy daw po at saka si Sir Rio have been raising uh, uh, their hand. Can I ask the uh, permission of... Okay lang po. Uh, yes po, uh, sir. To extend, ha? Huh? So sure yes, po, sure. wonderful. We're going to hear from Jimmy and Rio in that order. Thank you. Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, I have I have a suggestion uh, but to make my suggestion more concrete uh, can can we look can we look at uh, uh, for example uh, no? can we look at the shortest poem of all which is the last poem no? the very short poem there uh, is that okay um, okay. Um, yeah. Everybody else. <laughs> That's the title of the poem. And it goes this way. Uh, done, done looking for food, a cat sits still beside a dead body. That's it. No? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, um, if if the first poem, <laughs> I'm comparing the two. If the first poem is too long, it's too long. Uh, uh, the last poem is too short. No, okay. You know, the last poem almost long, almost, almost, almost says nothing, no? The, the, the first poem says too much, no? Okay, now, no, you know, you know, my dear friend, if you look up the word, see, I always look up words in the dictionary because I'm interested in the etymology, no? Yeah, you look up the word text. It is from Latin. You know, you know that English language, it's all Latin and Greek, no? I mean, not all, but many <laughs> Latin and Greek, no? Yeah, text. Latin, texere. Texere, Latin. What does it mean? To weave. So a text is a word weave. And then I look up the word context. To weave together. Or harmony. So the words must help each other, harmonize, okay? Yeah, okay, now, now supposing you look at this poem this morning, ayan, there's the second poem after the very, 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 very long one, no? That's on page 101. Look, huh? You, you know, mga kaibigan, uh, we're all writers, no? Uh, you know, we have nothing but words. We have nothing but words. In fact, the human being has nothing but words. Yeah, can you imagine a word without words? You will be lost. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a there, there's a poet who said a rose is a rose is a rose. So if it's a rose, it's a rose. It's not a gumamela, it's a rose. Correct? So, what is the nature of a word? 
truth saying. Aha, uh -huh. truth saying. We, what are we? What are we? Human beings. We are our words. Without our words, we, we make no sense. How do you make sense? You make sense with words. Okay? Now, when you have a poem, the words must harmonize. Oh, now you look at this poem. This, mor this morning, first stanza lang, kay vegan. First stanza. Oh, by the way, I, I, I love that word, kaibigan. Oh, yeah, that's Filipino. Kaibigan. Yeah? You test an American. You challenge an American. You say the word, katakataka. No American can pronounce it. Katakataka. No? So, <laughs> language is first of all words. Yeah. Kakaba uh, kaba. Oh, boy. Now, anyway, uh, look at this first stanza. Whenever he sees cows, he moves. He is learning language. Oh, yeah, sounds eh? I am learning its home. So there's a he and there's an I. He plays, makes sounds that are perfect and understandable to him. I am trying, I am trying to make sense of everyday news. The world in a video, human mother and baby found dead, trampled on by a young elephant, lost and scared. Instead of running away, the animal uses its trunk, gets some wigs and dried leaves, covers the mother first, then the little one, until people arrive. You know, you know, my dear friend, uh, you have to read, uh, you read the whole poem, huh? Okay, when you have read the whole poem, what is, what, what is, what is that, uh, uh, what is that human mother and baby and young, young elephant doing in that poem? How does it function in that poem? No, we don't get that anymore. Huh? You know, you get many, the child takes my phone watches how he blows a candle on his first birthday, waves his arms, dances. And then look at the English here. He is listening on, repeat the song everyone sings to celebrate his special day. About kaibigan, mali yung syntax dito. You examine this sentence. To him, it is just another baby. Where's that to him is another baby? Where's that? Yeah. Okay. To him, uh, maybe that's the eye. Because uh, you have the eye and the, and the child. Uh, you know, at the end of the poem, the baby has stopped waving. He's saying bye-bye all the time now to everyone, even when newly arrived, etc. Uh, you must read the other parts of the poem. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't want to waste all your time re, uh, um, with me. No? But anyway, you know, look at the poem. How do the parts, how do the parts weld together? Huh? How do they harmonize so that you have, see there are three constituents in the poem in any poem, any literary or creative work. Yung sinabi ko na, di ba? Uh, I do not have the Tagalog word for medium. <laughs> That's the first part. That's language. And then you have sai sai. That's meaning. What does the poem mean? But then the, the most important of all is diwa. Soul. Diwa is soul. The work has to have soul. Can you imagine that? Your poem will have will have to have soul, you know. That's hard work, my dear friend, as a writer. No, that's why I say, that's why I say the creative work is always work of language. You work the ground of language like the farmer works the soil to produce his crop. 
you work the language. It is as though you're inventing the language. In fact, the poem's language becomes its own. No? Ganun ang nangyayari. Yeah? Uh, katapos, work of imagination. You have to imagine first what the experience is yeah? before it can come alive in your imagination. Yeah? And imagination has infinite possibilities. That's why we need language because it is language that can catch but words cannot catch. Yeah? I mean the imagination. The imagination working the language can catch what the words cannot catch. It is as though you are reinventing the language when you write. Yeah. That's what I mean eh, about writing. Oh, oh yeah. It, I, I know, I know it's difficult. Uh, writing, good writing is rewriting. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So uh, uh, maybe I should stop there. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, can we call? Very much, Jimmy. Uh, now we have Rio. Ayo na. Ayo na po. Oh, ayo na. <laughs> oh, maraming salamat po. Uh, now, Vix, we have a few more words to say because I think we interrupted her. Ah, no, I'm good na po. Sige, Sir Neil. Thank you na po sa lahat. And I guess, ano, sa round table na lang kung meron pa kayong gustong sabihin tungkol din din sa mga tula. Parang si Sir Bowman. Salamat po and thank you everyone for the comments. Okay, uh, the session is finished. Uh, um, let's now turn over to the mon to the host, uh, Vlad. Are you the one hosting this? Or Rona? Pagbati kay Vic sa, pagta sa pagtatapos ng kanyang session. Maraming salamat po Sir Neil at pagbati sa ating lahat sa pagtatapos ng live portion ng ating workshop ngayong araw. Sa mga nanonood sa ating Facebook at YouTube, sana hindi one time big time ang ating pagsasama-sama at magkita muli bukas ng alas 9 ng umaga. Ihihinto muna natin ang ating broadcast upang makatuloy ang ating workshop fellows at panelists sa isang roundtable discussion at ang kanilang mga konsultasyon na isasagawa sa private channel via Zoom. Narito naman po ang ating schedule para bukas, August 17, 2021. At muli naman po ay narito ang ating social media pages. Mag-ingat palagi, maging mapagbantay, at hanggang sa muli. Magandang hapon po sa lahat.